Aloha and welcome to Lillian's Vegan World. I'm your host Lillian Kumik with Think Tech Hawaii. Today's show is Animal Activism in Hawaii 2021, creating awareness of animal exploitation. I would love to introduce my guest on the show today, co-founder of the animal rights activist organization, pardon me, Animal Rights Initiative, Amanda Fox. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure, Amanda. So, um, so grateful for you to come on the show. And I do want to say personally, thank you for everything that you do. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. It means a lot to me. Amanda, tell us about your organization, Animal Rights Initiative. Tell us what it's about. Well, um, it's just about how we can possibly get these animals protected, how we can stop them from being exploited, and anything that we can do in the meantime to sort of protest or pass legislature or introduce new foods to bystanders on the street, anything we can do that will be effective in helping raise awareness for the plight of these animals. That's what we're doing at Animal Rights Initiative, you know. Amazing. Um, when you mentioned these animals, are you talking about cats and dogs? No, I'm talking about all animals. Um, we're not uh, species specific. It's any animal that's being exploited. Uh, we believe that all animals are equal. You know, we can see with our own eyes that cats and dogs can feel pain uh, and it's the same for all of them. They're, yeah, it's the same for all of them. So we're fighting for all of them, especially animals in the animal, like that are being farmed for food. Mm -hmm. Or farmed yeah, for their clothing. Mm -hmm. Yep. The reason I asked that question, Amanda, is because I think people are so um, out of touch with uh, animals that somehow it always comes down to like the domesticated cats and dogs that people care about. And for some reason, humans have found a way to kind of just um, accept or, or be able to just let really bad things happen to animals that are not cats or dogs and, and not even, you know, bat an eye over it. That's why I asked. So we are in agreement that all animals, <laughs> whether it's the sheep, a, um, a cow, a pig, a chicken, all animals are sentient beings. Is that correct? They feel, they feel love. They can also feel pain. They can feel cruelness, torture, um, all of the above. Yeah, I love fear like you said they are, they love their babies they don't want to be separated they don't want to be scared they can they they feel all the same things that we are capable of feeling it's mm -hmm. wrong to deny that that's happening just because we have the ability to own cats and dogs in our own homes but the pigs and cows and fish are being exploited in farms outside of our like vision, you know, like this, just because it's happening behind closed doors doesn't mean that it's okay. And anybody can see that the animals feel pain, the animals feel joy, the animals want to be free. Mm -hmm. Okay, Amanda, I came across a very interesting um, article online. It, it's, it's from the world animalfoundation.com. And it goes through the 12 steps to become an animal advocate. Um, it does say, quote, the best way to persuade others to adopt humane and responsible lifestyles is to set a good example. So can you can you quickly um, go through a few things that we can do, like as a daily practice that will help animals in the future without having to, you know, actually be part of a demonstration or a protest? Yeah, great. And the easiest thing that we can do to help animals is to just live a vegan lifestyle or eat a plant based uh, diet. Uh, we can save or spare 200 animals a year just with our diet. And that's incredible. And when you really think about uh, the, the extension of veganism and uh, abolishing all animal exploitation, we're sparing animals in rodeos, sparing animals in circuses, aquariums, anything that animals could have been exploited in for their fur or for their skin, like anything. We're sparing thousands of animals when you think about that. And yeah, I would just start with eating a plant-based diet, just mm -hmm. as the first and foremost. Yeah, that, that's excellent advice. Are you vegan? Are you on a plant-based diet? Yeah, I, I've been vegan for about 12 years now. 
Mm -hmm. I'm actually curious, are there any volunteers at your animal rights initiative um, that show that help help with the demonstrations? Are there any that are actually not vegan? You know, we have had volunteers come that weren't vegan yet, but mm -hmm. that didn't last very long. Uh, once they were mm -hmm. exposed to what we were protesting for and they saw why we were so passionate about stopping the enslavement of these animals, stopping, stopping the torture of these animals, they too were you know, compelled to go vegan and not let this happen. We, we can't pay for this to happen. They were, yeah. So not well, anyone. that's good. Mm, that's that's good to know. So, for any of the viewers who are watching this show who are actually not, you know, living on a plant-based diet, you are welcome to to help out at the demonstrations if if you like. Is that something that you would welcome? Oh yeah, of course. Any any person that wants to help, come hold a sign or write an email to their legislature or any anything. We we want your help. Mm -hmm. um, we're not judging anybody. Um, we, yeah, the animals need our help and they need us to be working together. Mm -hmm. Okay, Amanda, take us through what uh, volunteers would do at your initiative with your organization in terms of um, animal activism. Sure. Uh, well, there's a lot of different types of demonstrations that we do. So some types are just street activism where we go down to a public area and show footage like hidden surveillance footage of what's happening inside these farms and a volunteer could just hold the screens or they can just hold the signs and let the other outreachers be speaking to the public about this or they can help us prep the tables they can help us prep the screens if they're not doing a street outreach of reach event. Uh, we also do food sampling events where they can help pass out food uh, samples or they can gather supplies. And um, in other events that we do, we have done like protests just outside of any stores. There's a lot of ways to be involved in these demos where they're not directly outreaching to bystanders, which is what causes people the most fear. You know, mm -hmm. they they can feel relaxed at these demos and know that they're supporting the demonstration that we really need these people to be holding the signs we really need this presence we really need this visibility just being there just watching the footage is creating visibility for other people that are saying like hey what's going on there hey why are they protesting for animal rights why are those animals being abused uh there's people that think that's wrong and maybe i'm a person like that too mm -hmm. Um, okay. If, if they aren't coming to those type of demonstrations, we also do legislative work where we need people's help to contact our legislators, contact our policymakers. That's something everyone can do from home. We have templates that can be sent out. Anything like mm -hmm. that can be sent from home. Mm -hmm. I actually uh, sign petitions every day. I, I belong to PETA, P-E-T-A. Um, you can go to their, their website and if you become a member, it doesn't cost anything. Becoming a member just means that they're going to email you and uh, ask you to sign petitions that you just email out. They actually do all the work for you. They even write the messages, which you are you, you can tweak any time. And I, I tweak them just to make them a bit more kind of uh, relative to Hawaii. But I, I often get responses from Senator Schotz's office um, acknowledging that they have received emails. I'm sure they know my name by now <laughs> because I do this literally every day and I know a lot of people that do. So that is one thing I can say um, to the viewers. If you if you genuinely want to help animals, they, they clearly need help. Please do start, you know, exactly what Amanda said, start signing petitions, start, you know, reaching out to your your um, government to your local community and, and do what you can for, for the animals. I mean, something's got to change in this world, quite frankly. We can't keep doing this and expect um, our, you know, just not aligning with our morals and the compassion and love that we're, we're born with because it's human nature to love animals. We've just, you know, somehow taken a really wrong turn and, and allow this to go on. So again, amazing what you do. Amanda, let's take a look at some of the slides that you've um, provided for us. Let's see the first one. Tell us a little bit about this. 
Great. So th that's an image of a food sampling event that we did mm -hmm. where we were giving out free samples of uh, different types of vegan chicken and vegan mm -hmm. pork. Um, so we generally in those events will sample a couple different brands of like a chicken nugget for example, and, or like uh, different samples of milks. Like we've done a ton of different milks. And obviously the demos are really popular because we are just all really excited. And we're like, hey, it's free food, just come try it. And the bystanders have never tried this before. And they're always so surprised how good it is. The, that type of sampling is just miraculous because every single person is like, wow. I had no idea that I could still be having the same taste, living my same life, but just with a vegan alternative that they sell at the same grocery store. We can get mm -hmm. pizza and ice cream and chicken nuggets at the same grocery store that we're already going to. We just need to go into a different aisle. And that's it. It's, it's brilliant. I love that. I, I really do love that idea of handing out, you know, plant-based uh, food. So most of the people in Waikiki, are they tourists? that approach you during well, these, you know, food samplings or the demonstrations, or are they locals? It's, it depends on the night, you know, like a lot of times they're mostly tourists. Most of the time people are from other places in the, in the States, but um, right now because of COVID, there's not as many tourists because tourism is kind of cut off from a couple areas of the world. So ha I would say half are local people and half are people traveling. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to get back to some of the footage, the video footage that you show people on the streets during these, um, during the outreach uh, program that you do. What What is the initial reaction people have when they see the footage I'm gathering is footage of slaughterhouses or what kind of footage are you actually showing? Sure. Well, in this type of demonstration that we're speaking about, where we would be showing hidden surveillance camera footage, mm -hmm. it's footage that an undercover worker would have had to go into the farm and place or wear the camera. So it's not sensationalized footage. It's just what's happening in the farms. And the, the bystanders walking by, they don't like it. They are shocked. They are sad. They're horrified that this is what's happening. They feel lied to. Um, they're, yeah, it, they're appalled. Everyone is appalled. And I can say that no one sees the footage of the animals being killed and feels hungry. Well, you know what they say, Amanda, sometimes the truth hurts and sometimes the truth shall set you free. Um, we are what we are talking about animal activism in Hawaii 2021, creating awareness of animal exploitation. Uh, we are going to take a very short break and be back with more on uh, animal exploitation with Amanda Fox. Stay tuned. Aloha. I'm Dan Leaf. I go by FIG because I was an Air Force fighter pilot for 33 years and you have to have a nickname. I get to host on Think Tech Hawaii two shows, Figments, The Power of Imagination, and Figments on Reality. The Power of Imagination introduces you to some of my incredible friends and their life experiences, astronauts, war heroes, Hollywood writers, you name it, they're on it and you'll be inspired and entertained. And on reality, I'll give you something hard to find non-political commentary on today's events. That's right, non-political because the vitriol doesn't help folks. So figments, the power of imagination, figments on reality, both on Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome back to Lillian's Vegan World. I'm your host, Lillian Kumik, and today's show is Animal Activism in Hawaii 2021 creating awareness of animal exploitation. I am a vegan chef, cooking instructor, and cookbook author. I, I published my first book, Hawaii, A Vegan Paradise, last year, 2020, in November, 
and I'm so excited to tell you about my second book, Tasting Hawaii, Vegan Style. This book is has over 120 uh, vegan recipes, all plant-based and all gluten-free. So it should be hitting stores early December. You can also order the book directly from Mutual Publishing, which is a local publishing house. So you will be supporting local when you purchase this book. I'd like to welcome back my guest, Amanda Fox, to the show. Welcome back, Amanda. Great, thank you. <laughs> Amanda, let's get right back into it. We're talking about uh, your animal rights initiative. You are the co-founder and you have some upcoming events. Amanda, how, first of all, how can people reach, uh, get in touch with you if they want to volunteer for your organization? If they want to volunteer, we have a Facebook group. So there's a Facebook page, the Animal Rights Initiative, and then there's the group. There's one specifically for Oahu, and then there's a main one too. So Animal Rights Initiative group, and then there's Animal Rights Initiative Oahu. Mm -hmm. Do you have an email address that you would like to share? Yeah, I would love for anybody to get into contact with me if they'd like to. It's amandahenson.ari at gmail.com. Okay, awesome. So please, anyone watching the show who, who really wants to make a difference can start by, by reaching out to Amanda and uh, doing something to help, help the animals. Amanda, here's a question for you. How can children be educated about animal exploitation without scaring them? Well, that, that's a good question. Uh, we don't need to scare them. We don't need to show them footage of the animals being hurt. Anim like, animals being hurt is sensitive to ch for children. You know, they, they don't want to see animals being hurt. They, children are the first ones to say, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. You know, they're like, why is that happening? Um, they don't want it to happen. They don't, they don't need as many details. They don't need as many facts because children are more connected to their heart already. Like as we grow older, we become desensitized. We have our own biases. We have our own like opinions that we formulated around these diets because we're seeing them as just a diet. Whereas to a child, they see the animals for what they are, animals. So the an they know that hurting animals is wrong. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. I Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, uh, what do you say to people who claim animal activists are aggressive and intrusive? Uh, well, I would say to just watch TV for about an hour and see how many times you're advertised animal products. And I would say that that is really intrusive. And that is really aggressive. <laughs> almost every single commercial is going to have animal products in it. And they're going to try to make you think that it's healthy. They're going to try to make you think that the animals were being treated fairly. And it's not true. It's marketing. So our protests or our demonstrations or just giving out free food, there's no way possible that we could be as in your face or as intrusive or aggressive as these marketing campaigns from these restaurants, from McDonald's, from from anywhere, from Cheesecake Factory, anywhere that is exploiting animals. They should think about that as intrusive. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is actually a really great answer. I have never thought about that. And you're absolutely right. I, I like that. Um, Amanda, let's take a look at another one of your slides. Tell us about this one. Great. Uh, this one, that's from another sampling that we did where we had, um, we had a partnership with an animal sanctuary where they brought a rooster to the sampling. So we were passing out, um, we were passing out vegan chicken products and vegan turkey products and having a live rooster there that was totally safe, that we didn't let anyone pet, just had there um, and was put away as soon as we felt like they needed to be treated very gently, but it was really helpful for the bystanders to be like, oh, this is the chicken that I don't want to hurt. You don't see these animals and instinctively think, I want to hurt that animal. So we have to really, it helps people confront the difference between our actions and what we want. Because right, right now, if you're not living a vegan lifestyle, you're paying people to hurt animals. And seeing the live animals there is a really wake, a big wake up call for people to think, oh, I don't want to pay for someone to hurt that animal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. People don't get it that they are actually, whether it's directly or indirectly, they are supporting this cruelty to continue on. So, 
yeah, yeah. it's um it's horrendous and it's sad at the same time but you know i'm so i'm so excited with how, with where the plant based diet is going it's the strongest growing diet on the planet as of today um, so more and more people are, you know, giving up their knives for, for forks, which, which is awesome. In my second book, I talk a lot about um, the plant-based diet and veganism, the vegan lifestyle. And it's such an easy thing to do. Like there's nothing difficult about, you know, giving up meat and fish because it's all in the mind when you think about it. My husband is not vegan, but he eats, um, our home is vegan. And when we go out, he eats whatever he likes. He's not a vegan so he'll eat meat fish whatever and I I, I say this without um, without kidding you that he doesn't feel very good after he eats you know like a, a burger or something like that when we go out because he's so used to eating so much you know plant-based food at home when he does um, not stray but when he does eat what he wants he, he doesn't feel good I can see it I can see it without him having to say anything um, you're going to feel good when you start going plant-based and you're going to feel good emotionally as well because everything starts to align, would you say? Like you become more, when you become more aware of your food and, and when you become more mindful of what you're eating, like things start to, to shift. And that's what I think people need to do. Find that, find that place where you can, you know, look at yourself in the mirror and go, wow, I did something cool today. You know, I didn't support any of that you know an, animal cruelty because I did I went vegan for a day for a meal so you can just start there I think what you said about you know going plant-based is is a great a great way to start you know helping animals so I do urge anyone who's watching the show to just you know give up that give up meat even even if you start once once a week that's a good start so um, tell us some more daily daily practices daily choices that we can make um, that will help animals in the future. So we can definitely sign petitions, go online, um, reach out to the Facebook group, your Facebook group, Animal Rights Initiative, see what's going on there. What else? We can go plant-based. Um, what other practices are there? Well, it's important to remember that veganism is not just about our diet. It's about what we're wearing and what we're using too. And these products that are tested on animals too, because a lot of the products that people are using like for beauty, uh, for house cleaning, those animals are currently being tested on animals or those products are currently being tested on animals that don't need to be. And plenty of those products are available at regular grocery stores at Target, anywhere that you're going, they have a natural option too that's not tested. Um, and if, if you're at the store and making a choice on what to purchase and you don't know, you can just say Clorox tested on animals in your phone and you'll find it was tested on animals. So you can go to the next brand, seventh generation, tested on animals and you'll find it wasn't tested on animals. So you can know that you can buy that product guilt-free, that you're not funding these cruel experiments on animals the same way that we choose our food, the same way that we would choose not to buy uh, cashmere or not to buy a wool sweater or any, anything like that because there's no way to farm these animals in such a massive way without hurting them. There's no way. There's billions of people on the planet making these purchases. We have to make conscious consumer purchases, you know? Mm. Yeah, excellent point. And that's not, that's also not hard to do. That's exactly, I mean, people walk around talking to Siri all day. You can just ask Siri if exactly what you said, if the brand that you have picked up when you're at the store is tested on animals, that's a great way to do it. And, you know, you can start by learning how to read labels. I love um, teaching people about lab reading labels, like becoming aware of what, what, what's in the product that you're buying, whether it's food or as you just pointed out, cosmetics. Very, very important point, Amanda. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's have a look at another one of your slides. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, this one's from a street outreach event that we did in Waikiki and the two people on the right, they are 
bystanders that attended our event. They saw the footage. They actually came and said hi to one of the dogs, my dog that I had brought to the event, because they instinctively loved my dog. They wanted to pet her. And it gave us the opportunity to be like, hey, well, if you love this dog, let me show you this footage, because the footage sometimes shows dog farming, because it's happening all over the world, even though it's not happening in the United States or not happening in Australia, it's happening. And they were instantly like, oh, made the connection. And they came back the next week to tell us that they had been vegan for a whole week and that they had planned to continue it. And that it wasn't as hard as they thought, but they felt much better about aligning their actions with their morals. Because like you said, we're lying to ourselves if we're saying we care about animals or just don't want them to suffer, but we're paying for them to suffer, you know? so. That's one of my favorite slides, actually. That's awesome. That's so awesome that these bystanders, you know, came over and uh, took that leap of faith and and opened up their their mind if for a moment, and then you know went vegan for a week. Hopefully, they still are um, practicing that uh, you know what they said that they enjoyed. Amanda, let's have a look at another one of your slides. Okay, uh, this one's from a dairy event that my group protested at. We uh, disrupted their event. It was an ice cream festival. It was a dairy ice cream festival. And so we went, we all had our signs and we walked through, we walked through and let everybody know there that the animals that made the milk that they were eating were tortured. Their babies were killed. We the, the farmers had to kill the baby calves in order for those humans to have that ice cream. And it doesn't make sense because we can just have oat milk ice cream or coconut milk ice cream or soy milk or anything. Any other ice cream that doesn't involve killing already exists. So we went there with tons of activists and made it very clear that we did not think that it was okay to be celebrating this dairy ice cream festival. We did a speak out, we had speeches. It was it was really fun. A lot of people were really affected. They were shocked with the information that we were giving them because it had been hidden from them their whole lives, thinking that these cows are just out there grazing and giving milk away freely, not being told that we're actually impregnating them forcibly and taking their babies away and hooking them up to machines where they're milked every single day. It's really painful. Mm -hmm. Amanda, thank you so much for um, sharing your thoughts and I, I do wish you and your organisation all the best and I, I support everything that you do um, for the animals and, and please to any of the viewers who are watching do reach out to Animal Rights Initiative Amanda Fox, I'm sure she'll get back to you or someone from her team can get back to you and let you know how you can help. Amanda, it's been awesome having you on the show, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. And to everyone else, I look forward to seeing you another time on Lillian's Vegan World. Stay safe and aloha.